something that I'll think about doing a lot is, uh, is transitions. And I will ride forward into a trot and c get his energy level up a little bit. And maybe even using the trail obstacles here to help him get, get lively. But I'll work on that life coming up and now that life coming down and slow movement. I'll sit relaxed. Whenever there's an obstacle that my horse might question, I won't look down at my horse. I won't look down at the obstacle. I'm looking through the ears and up. So I want to know I'm going forward. My horse needs to know we're going forward. So by looking up, you're keeping that focus going. You're keeping your seat active. So I'll tell my horse, keep on moving, keep on moving forward. You can do this. If you find you're using your leg a lot when you ride, like if you're squeezing all the time, I want you to think about what that does to your position. So if you're squeezing, chances are your leg is back here. So now if he stops or slows down, you're probably going to fall forward. The other thing is, if I'm using tense muscle, if I'm squeezing, my horse has to match me. So whatever we're doing with our muscle tone, with our back, they do. If we're squeezing, perpetually squeezing, not only are we nagging and dulling them and losing forward, but we're causing them to tighten up their muscles. We don't want them to tighten up these muscles. So what I would encourage you to think about is this. If your horse isn't very forward, you might work on something like backing up, sit up, tuck your seat under like you're tucking your tail under, and we call that a driving seat, and open the leg. So all together, it's at the same time, all three of these aids are together. What I do is I sit up, I tuck my seat, I open my leg. At first, people think, open the leg? That's weird. I was taught to squeeze my horse. H how many of you were taught squeeze your leg to go? Squeezing your leg is really good at getting horses to go up. Think about a young horse you've never ridden before. Get on, like those, uh, those horses out there. Imagine they get on those horses, first thing they do is they squeeze their legs. What are those horses going to do? They're going to go up. Save squeezing your leg for when you advance. Save squeezing for elevation. They're herd animals. When the herd moves, they move. So if I think of doing something like this, sit up, tuck seat, open leg. If he doesn't go, maybe I wiggle my leg. And I'll show you that little motion. It's a swing that comes from my hip and my knee. So see, I just swing my leg a little. Just swing it. And by doing that, I don't have to stiffen up my muscles in my leg. Whereas squeezing, we're stiff. So work on sitting up, tuck the seat, open leg. Now, if he doesn't go, I wiggle and might even kick him. And I always say you can wiggle, you can bump, you can kick with your leg, but don't squeeze your leg. Save squeezing for later. And I might do this a few times. If he's sluggish, I'll see how soon can we trot. So I'm, I'm a little firmer a little sooner. I might say, how soon could we canter and bring him back? Now, if I work on how soon too much, we're going to make our horses nervous. So this is something when we talk about balance with horses, this is a little exercise that can give you balance. And that is, once they start responding, now I ask the question, how little does it take to walk? So how little we prepare things longer, we give the horse a little more time. If he's thinking, if he's trying, we let him think. We don't rush that. He's responsive, so now I just think of sitting up. This is all it should take to walk your horses off. That much. If they're sluggish, how soon? So now I say, how soon can we trot? How soon could we halt, right? I might need more life, so how soon could we canter? And even bringing him back to walk, I'm going to see how little it takes. So I think of sitting up, bringing my seat. As I sit up, I'm... I'm not rocking forward, 
I'm not pumping forward. You see people go like this, rocking forward. That's just going to weight the forehand down. What I want to do is think about my hips going forward and up. So I think about sitting back, and as I walk, I'm going to think of riding a wave, like I'm scooping with my seat. Three, two, one, halt. So I'm establishing forward. We're establishing halt. We want our horse between our legs, between our reins. If they're not responsive, I want you to work on getting them responsive. So we work on how soon. But once they start responding, back off. See how little it takes to get it done. And that gives you a balance. So oftentimes you wonder, should I get firm? And I'll, I'll, I'll say, is your horse thinking? And people say, yeah, he's, you know, he's thinking. So I say, okay, let's sharpen that response. And when you hear the respect word, you know, a horse should respect you, right? We hear that all the time. Well, what is respect? It's appropriate response. So I used to hear it, clinicians tell me respond to respect or response gives you respect. So that's what I start thinking about is how responsive is my horse. All right, hindquarter. We need to know that we can move his hindquarters. Now, when we first introduce this, we might use what we call lateral aid. And that would be like left rein, left leg, and you'll see people take their horse's head to the side and step their hindquarters over, right? And that would be something you would do if a horse were going to rear, if a horse were really green. It's easy for them to understand one side of their body. So as we introduce this, you might see right rein, right leg. Maybe I bring my right shoulder back, and I'm asking that hindquarters to step under. It's simple for the horse to understand one side, the right side. It's simple for us to work one side of our body. The problem with this is, if we work only left side, so left rein, left leg, what happens is horses tend to overbend and they fall out through the shoulder. And I know we've all, you've, you've experienced this, where people go, okay, I wanna move the hind, and you'll see people get kinda crazy and contorted, and they'll go like this. I'm moving the hind, and they look at the hind, have you seen this, and their horse, falls out. Well, their head's heavy, and you're bending them so far, if his head's going way over here to my left, he has to counterbalance, so he takes his mass to the right. So what happens is people get the sideways effect. So they pull more, and they get more of that. So let me show you what we call diagonal aiding, and this is something you want to introduce as you go. This is more advanced, but it will balance your horse out a lot more. Diagonal aiding means you're using both sides of your body at the same time. How many of you have heard dressage instructors teach inside leg to outside rein? You hear that a lot, right? Inside leg to outside rein. Okay, what is that? Well, that's using both sides of my body. So as we work on turns on the forehand, I might initiate it with a little bit of a left rein, left leg, but more than left rein, I squeeze and release my outside rein. And what I'm actually doing is I'm half halting his right front foot. We'll get into that a little bit more, but what I'm doing is I'm telling him, keep that right front foot on the ground longer. So as that foot lands, I squeeze right rein, right rein. Now I'm using my left leg at the same time I'm squeezing that right rein. I'm using both sides of my body, and that's called diagonal aiding. Now, that is a little harder at first, and it's something we have to work on. But I'll have people take their hands and just very slowly go up and down with their front legs. And so I'll just, and, and not pull back, but just have people place their hands up and down so they get in time with that outside foreleg, and pretty soon they can half halt, squeeze, and release as that foreleg hits the ground. You're starting to keep your horse straighter. So we go forward. I feel the rib cage swinging as we walk, and the ribs swing left to right. If I take the swing of that rib cage and my legs are relaxed, I can feel that rib cage swing. So I know the timing of when to ask my horse to move his rear. All I do is I expand, increase the swing of his rib cage. So when I'm walking along, if his rib cage swings to the left, all I have to do, if I want to step him over, take my legs, like swing that rib cage over a little more. If I want to do a turn on the forehand, 
I feel the rib cage swing, so I just use my seat and my leg to take that hindquarters over. If you're having to use a lot of leg, if you have to ride your horse off of a lot of leg, it won't work that well to ride with your seat. So the first thing you have to do is get that horse responding and respectful to your forward aids with your seat and your body, that active position.